Hey, I'm Bobbit. I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a simple tool caddy with a removable parts bin. A few weeks ago I made this really simple rolling tool cart. And I made it for my leather working tools, but the whole idea is that you could put anything in there. It got me thinking about other groups of tools in my shop that don't have a specific home and need to move around a little bit. And one of those that came to mind was my beekeeping tools. So I think what I'm going to do is build a really simple tool carrier with a handle that sticks up out of the middle of it and some dividers so I can put the tools down in it. But I think it could actually be even cooler by adding a tray that slides onto the bottom and closes. This tray will only be open on the top so you can put hardware or small things inside of it that you don't want to fall out. Overall, this is a really simple box. We're just gonna do some interesting joinery on the corners, but the first thing I have to do is to cut down these pieces of cedar to the right size, and I wanna glue up a panel for the inside where the handle's gonna go, because that's a taller piece. To put these two pieces together, I'm gonna use some dowels in between them, but when I push them together, I can see there's quite a bit of a gap. So I am gonna clean this up on the joiner. But first, I wanted to explain how the doweling jig works. It's a center finding jig, so you can drill the hole and it'll be exactly in the center of this face. Then in that hole, you put one of these doweling centers. It has a little point on it, so when you press the two boards together, it leaves a mating indention on the other board. Then you can drill the hole there, stick the boards together. For the corners on these boxes, I want to do something that's very simple, but I've never actually done it before. I want to make giant finger joints. So basically, there's only one finger per piece. And what I mean by that is we'll have one piece with a little half lap notch at the top, and then the other piece will have the opposite cutout. When these things overlap, as long as this size is the thickness of this material, they should meet up in the corner. To make that actually work out the way I want, I need to make each one of the side pieces the size that I want plus the thickness of this material. So this is going to be 12 inches plus the 3 quarter. One thing really important here is to mark the areas that you're gonna cut away. And in this case, I'm doing the top of one side and the bottom of the other. And if I do that same thing on every piece, they will all slot together in a line and then you can fold it into a box. These fit pretty well and the glue and some clamps will definitely hold them really tight. But before I glue them up, I need to actually put a dado in two of the sides so that that center divider with the handle can slide down in. This video is brought to you by the Maker Alliance, which is a super awesome group of people that support I Like To Make Stuff and get a whole bunch of extra content. They get to see exclusive videos, all the project videos before everybody else, monthly hangouts, free plans, and a bunch of other stuff. If you want to find out more, go to iliketomakestuff.com slash join. So we've got the four sides here ready to go to put together, but next we've got to work on the interior, and these are going to be two dividers that are going to slot together. This one's fine, just needs the slot in it, but this one is the taller one with the handle cut in it. So first I've got to draw and cut that, then we've got to make the slots so that these will fit together. I've got this kind of roughed out, but it's not symmetrical and it needs to be. So I'm going to take a piece of paper and actually draw from the center line just to do one side, fold the paper over, cut that out, and then I'll make a symmetrical template.
We got this thing cut out really quickly on the bandsaw. You could use a jigsaw just as easily. In fact, we're gonna use a jigsaw to connect these two holes. I'm gonna draw a line across the top and the bottom, cut it out with a jigsaw, then we'll take the router with a roundover bit and curve all of these surfaces to make it more comfortable to hold. That's a really nice tight fit. I do need to go back and put some glue in that before I do a final assembly, but I wanted to point something out. The dados I made in these side panels are really tight in there, which is good, except that cedar is not particularly strong. So if I try to force these together, there's a good chance that I could break a piece of cedar across the grain. Instead, I'm gonna take all of these center pieces and actually sand down the edge that goes in that dado just a little bit to make it fit and not be too snug. Now when you put glue in that joint, it's gonna swell it a little bit and it'll be nice and tight. I've got all these pieces good to go, they're ready to glue up, except there's no place for a bottom to go in the bottom of this toolbox. So I'm gonna take these two center pieces and cut off just a little bit so I can recess a piece of plywood in the bottom, and then I'll go back and put a rabbit in the rest of the pieces. Now the last thing on this part of the project is to put in the bottom panel and I need to use half inch plywood for that. The only piece I have around <laughs> that is not a full sheet was drawn on by my kids. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna cut this down and stick it on the bottom. Now I've got some awesome artwork on the bottom of my tool tote. You could stop here if you wanted to. It definitely needs finish and some more details. But the next step here is to add another tray that's gonna go on the bottom and it'll latch on one side. I'm gonna go ahead and make that basically the same way that I made this one and then I'll show you how I'm gonna put it together. Now that that smaller tray is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and make the slides on the bottom of this tote. Now what I mean by that is I'm taking some pieces of aluminum angle and I'm gonna mount them right on the bottom of three sides of this tote. I'm gonna offset it just a little bit so there's a little slot right here. Then we're gonna put another piece on that tray that fits in that slot. So you can slide it in from one end and it will be captured on three sides. So let me show you that. I'm gonna start by cutting some miters on this piece to wrap around three sides. I always wanna point out that you can use most woodworking tools to cut aluminum, especially something really thin like this. I've got this upside down so that I can put these rails on the side. They need to be lifted up so that the rails that are on the top of our little slide can actually fit in here. So before I screw them on, I'm gonna put some washers underneath them and that'll give us the offset that we need. Then we'll pre-drill and drive in some screws from the outside to lock these in place.
Now we've got a really simple tray that's going to fit right here underneath the entire tote. It's going to slide out from this side, which means we have to put another track on the inside of this tray. So we're going to use another piece of angle and wrap these three sides so it can slide in. Here we've got the rail installed on these three sides, so we're going to give it a shot and see if it actually slides in like I think it will. One little problem I found is that when it slides in, it actually goes past the end of the top section. I don't really want that. I found a really simple and kind of silly workaround. On the back section of this, I actually am going to take a piece of rubber tubing, stretch it out, and slide it down in there all the way to the bottom. And then when I let it go, it's going to try to get itself back to the center. And it ends up filling up some of that gap and gives me kind of a squishy bumper. So when I slide the thing in, it won't go back any further than it needs to. Now it stops right there is exactly where it needs to go. To get this thing to stay in place, I'm going to use a lock from a window and it has two pieces that you can just set together, screw them into the surface, and then when you turn this, it will release the bottom section. You can slide it in and out and then lock it back. But before I put this in place, I need to sand and finish the whole thing. I was sanding and I had it almost finished, but I think it needs one more detail. I'm gonna take a cue from the tool cart that I showed you earlier. I cut some strips of walnut to put on the top surfaces. Now this is gonna be decorative, but it's also gonna protect the soft cedar as you take tools out and put tools into this thing. Now this thing's done, I'm just going to go ahead and load it up with the beekeeping tools that I talked about, but you could totally put anything in here. Hammers, screwdrivers, whatever you want down in these sections, and then put smaller items on the bottom, maybe a socket head that you don't want to lose. You can drop all those or screws or whatever in the bottom section, close it up and lock it away. This project turned out really well and actually went together in less than a day. It's a quick and very simple build and even though I used a bunch of different tools, you could do almost all of it with the most basic tool set. The cool thing is you can use it for whatever you want. Maybe you put some gardening tools to take it outside. Maybe you put some automotive tools to go change your oil or cleaning supplies. You could use something like this for anything. If this gave you some ideas for a project that you can use in your shop or in your workspace, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. We're going to have some plans available for this and the rolling tool cart that I showed you earlier. If you want to check those out, hit the links down below. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that and hit the bell. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Um. Hey! So there you go. This is... <laughs> Nailed it. Okay. I'm gonna take a cue from the tool cart that I showed you earlier and cut them cut, cut them thin through it. <laughs> With a removable parts bin. <laughs> oh!